Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're gonna be doing a two-part series on evidence-based gluteus medius strengthening. So this is part one. So I'll be recording part two probably in the next week, so make sure to take a look for that on my channel. Now, for gluteus medius strengthening part one and two, we're gonna be using components of this systematic review right here, an examination of the gluteal muscle activity associated with dynamic hip abduction and hip external rotation exercise, a systematic review. Now, if you look here in this figure, on the bottom they've got exercises in the gluteus maximus activity. We don't really care about that for this video. And on the top here is what we do care about. This is gluteus medius activity. And the way they quantified the activity is with percent MVIC, maximal volitional isometric contraction. So obviously the higher the number is, the more it activates the gluteus medius. And if you look here, we'll zoom in a little bit so you can see better. And I apologize for the clarity of this figure. It's not great. But what you can see here, at least from this study, from what they measured, the highest activation of the gluteus medius was in a side bridge with abduction. Technically, the dominant leg was down. They did another with the dominant leg up. But these exercises get a ton of activity of the gluteus medius. We're never going to start with those exercises. We're going to start, particularly with low-level patients, with the easier ones. And so they have here, let's say, the seated hip abduction machine. That's at a gym. Most <laughs> clinics are not going to have that. So your first thought might be to do something like a clamshell, or you can see down here, sideline hip abduction. So they've got a lot of clamshell variations, and they have their own numbering system for that. You can look at the paper to see exactly what they were, but they're basically just clamshells and then sideline hip abduction. And this is one systematic review that a lot of people point to for why clamshells are just a dumb exercise. Okay, Because if you look, sideline hip abduction gets more activity of the gluteus medius than any of these other clamshell variations. The clamshell 4, whatever that is, is pretty close. But clamshells two and three here, they don't get anywhere near the gluteus medius activity that the sideline hip abduction gets. And so people are like, clamshells are bad. You'll see that on social media and YouTube shorts and whatnot. Clamshells are a bad exercise. They don't really get the gluteus medius. Sideline hip abduction is way better. And if you're just looking at simple active range of motion, so no band resistance, no nothing, that's true. Sideline hip abduction, when performed correctly, gives more gluteus medius activity than the clamshells. And therefore, we could extrapolate and say that the sideline hip abduction is overall better for strengthening the gluteus medius than clamshells are. Here's the big problem. Sideline hip abduction, as you can see with this bullet point right here, the vast majority of people in the clinic do not perform this correctly and actually cannot do it even with appropriate cueing. And that's because when you perform sideline hip abduction, and we'll see this in just a few minutes when we look at the videos, you're not actually bringing the legs straight up in the frontal plane. You actually want to bring it up about 75% vertically and about 25% posteriorly. The gluteus medius is a posterior muscle. It's more on the side of the glutes, but it's still posterior. So if we're trying to get gluteus medius activation, we actually need to bring the leg a little bit behind the frontal plane of our body as we're bringing the leg up. Most people are not going to be able to do this. And whether that be because they have a weak gluteus maximus, they have limited hip extension range of motion, or just generally the muscles in that area are just too weak to do it, they're not gonna be able to do it correctly, and therefore, they're not gonna get the benefit of the gluteus medius strengthening that this paper and others like it propose. So it's actually very seldom that I have somebody start with sideline hip abduction unless they demonstrate the ability to be able to do it automatically or with the appropriate cueing. So we still need the gluteus medius to get stronger, but what are we to do if sideline hip abduction is insufficient? Well, we're gonna to go to clamshells. And clamshells are not all bad. They're not the best gluteus medius exercise, but we've gotta start somewhere. Now, in this paper, as I showed you, there's clamshells two, three, and four. There's also a one that didn't even make it on this chart. Um, and they have their own nomenclature for how they defined those. In my clinic, we have clamshells level one, two, and three. And they each mean a different thing. And each one is a progressively more aggressive gluteus medius exercise. And once somebody masters level one, we go to level two. 
and then to level three, and then to sideline hip abduction. And hopefully you'll find as you watch these clips that this is a logical progression of how to build somebody's gluteus medius strength to the point where they previously could not correctly do a sideline hip abduction to the point where they are able to do it. So enjoy the next few clips and I'll see you at the end of the video. Now the first clamshell variation we're gonna be looking at is the standard clamshell. Let me show you real quick, just so we're all on the same page. Feet stay together and the top knee comes up as you see right there. That is the standard clamshell. This is the one that's used in pretty much every clinic across the globe to strengthen gluteus medius. It's used in literature studies to investigate EMG activity of the gluteus medius. And in this video and in my clinic, we're going to call this a level one clamshell. Now levels one, two, three, you won't find that in any literature article or anything like that. That's just personal terminology that I use in our clinic so I can differentiate which variation we are using but the standard clamshell is a level one clamshell. Feet stay together and that top knee comes up. Now, there's a few important things to note here about this version of the clamshell. The first is the position of the band here. The band, and this is where I use it for the vast majority of patients, is just above the knee right across the thighs. You can use it right on the knee joint line or even below on the top part of the lower leg, I just find personally that most people get most of the benefit when it is just above the knee, but that is a personal preference. The other thing is the relative position of my hips. As I have it right now, my thighs are a little bit too far in front of my body. The gluteus medius is a posterior muscle. It's more on the side of the posterior, but it is posterior. So if we really wanna get a lot of glute activation here, I need to keep my knees bent to 90 degrees, but shift my legs a little bit more behind me as you see right there. They don't need to be behind the frontal plane of your body, but the more behind, Now the first clamshell variation I'm gonna be showing you is the standard clamshell. Let me just show you the movement real quick so we're all on the same page. Feet stay together and the top knee comes up like that. That is the standard clamshell. It's the one that's used in pretty much every clinic across the globe. It's used in EMG studies that are investigating activity of the gluteus medius, the standard clamshell. And in this video and in my clinic, we term this level one clamshell. Now levels one, two, three, you're not gonna find those in any literature article. That's just terminology that I created for myself to help differentiate which one we're actually doing. But with the standard clamshell or level one clamshell, there's a few nuances here that I think are important to point out. One is the band position. The band is really the best way to get more resistance on the gluteus medius. And I have it just above the knees, right across both thighs. You can put it right across the knee joint line or even a little bit below on the top of the lower leg, but this is just a personal preference. Now, what is not a personal preference is the second nuance, and that is the relative position of my hips. As I am laying right here, my thighs are a little bit more in front of my body. Now, the gluteus medius is more of a posterior glute muscle. It's a little more on the side than the gluteus maximus, but it's still posterior. So to really get more activity there, what I actually need to do is I actually need to keep my knees bent to 90 degrees, but I need to shift my legs a little bit more backwards. They don't need to be behind the frontal plane of your body, but if they're too far forward, you're not gonna get very good gluteus medius activation. And if somebody doesn't yet have that mind-muscle connection and those muscles are really weak, uh, they're not gonna really feel it as much if the legs are in front. So we wanna get them a little bit more behind like this. Now, as you start doing this, you may notice that people start doing this rocking thing. They're not able to really control the spine, particularly the lumbar spine, as they're bringing this up. There's a number of reasons that that might be. It could be that their core is not producing enough stability there, and so their lumbar spine is rotating. It could be that the gluteus medius is not very strong. One way to, to circumvent this is to have them hold onto the edge of the table around jaw level right here. And what you're gonna have them do is pull themselves in isometrically. You're not actually pulling yourself over, but you're really just holding tight there. And what that does is it braces the core. And 
when you brace the core, the spine's less likely to rotate, and so you can really isolate that hip movement more. So let's take a look at that. Pull yourself in, brace the core, rotate up, and notice there, there's really no spinal movement. Keep the core braced, feet together, knee comes up, feel that glute squeeze, hold a couple seconds, and then come back with control. That is your level one clamshell. Now, with the level one clamshell, the movement we are doing is primarily hip external rotation. There is a little bit of the gluteus medius that helps with that, but the movement is mainly external rotation. So you might be doing your manual muscle test. You find a weak external rotation. This is a great exercise to do. But if your goal is more gluteus medius, we wanna to progress to level two clamshells once the level one is easy enough. And a level two clamshell looks very similar. The only real difference is that instead of just the knee coming up, it's the knee and the foot. Let's take a look at that movement right here. So again, brace the core by holding onto the table edge and then both knee and foot come up. About the same amount, knee stays bent to about 90 degrees and then come back down. When people do this movement, one common thing you might see is the leg comes too far forward. We don't want that. We want the leg to stay directly over the bottom one and then come back down. Now the benefit of a level two clamshell is that it bypasses the need to do the sideline hip abduction, which is a very challenging movement, and we'll get to why that is more in a few minutes, but it makes it a little bit easier because the knee is bent. So you have a short lever there's less activity of the gravitational torque on the hip. And so you're gonna be able to do this movement a little bit easier than you would sideline hip abduction. And it's more of an abduction movement because rather than just doing external rotation like we did in level one, the whole leg is coming up into abduction. So this is gonna be more challenging than the level one clamshell. That is level two. Level three clamshells are sort of our bridge from the clamshells to sideline hip abduction. The one thing that's important to remember with sideline hip abduction, and we'll get to this more in a minute, is it's not just the leg coming straight up and especially not coming forward. We want that leg to go up and a little bit backwards. We'll get to that more in a minute. So level three clamshells can help make that bridge between the regular clamshells one and two and sideline hip abduction. So for a level three clamshell, we're gonna start off exactly the same as level two. But once I'm at the top, I'm gonna to straighten my top leg backwards, hold there a couple seconds, and then come back and then down. Let's take a look at that. So brace the core here, start off the same as a level two clamshell, but now I'm gonna straighten that leg backwards. That's gonna really get those glutes firing. Come back and then down. Let's do that one more time. Start off as you would with a level two clamshell, knee and foot up, straighten that leg backwards. That is really getting those glutes firing. Come back and down. The reason I love this exercise, two reasons actually. One is if you do this, you will absolutely feel your glutes on fire with this. The second reason is that it starts to train that movement of the thigh posteriorly, okay? What we don't want with this is as you are coming up here, you don't want the spine to rotate like that. If the spine's rotating like that, you might need to look at hip extension mobility, gluteus maximus strength, core stability, and address those things. It could just be a simple cueing thing. And if it's a simple cueing thing, have the person practice level three clamshells until they can pretty much do this with a decent band resistance consistently for about 10 repetitions. Once they have that mastered, you can progress to sideline hip abduction. Now, sideline hip abduction is one of the most commonly incorrectly performed exercises that there is. So let me show you a few common things that you'll see with it. The first thing is the leg comes straight up. As I mentioned before, it's not a bad exercise, it could just be better. So if the leg is coming straight up, you wanna cue the person to move the leg up and posteriorly. I usually say that you want it to be about 75% up 
and about 25% backward or posterior. And again, the reason for that is because the glutes, gluteus medius that is, is a glute muscle. It's more posterior. So to really get it activated, we need the leg to go a little bit behind the frontal plane of the body. Okay. Another common thing you'll see is the leg will just straight up come forward. That is really not going to get much of gluteus medius at all. It'll still get a little bit of it, but we're shortchanging that exercise. So if the person brings it forward like this, or if they're at center, we want to really cue them to try and bring the leg backwards. And what we don't want with that is to see a lot of this lumbar arching like that. If they're getting a lot of lumbar arching, uh, that's probably because of multiple reasons that we kind of already hinted at. One is they have limited hip extension mobility, and you can tease that out by getting them in prone and doing a hip extension range of motion test. If it's limited, you might need to do some mobilizations on that to improve that range of motion for extension. It could also be the gluteus maximus is weak. And if the gluteus maximus is weak, which you can again tease out with a manual muscle test, you should probably do some gluteus maximus strengthening so that way they are able to bring that leg more backwards, okay? The other thing, particularly with that lumbar extension compensation, is it could just be limited core stability. The core, even with this maneuver right here at the arm, it's not stable enough to be able to move that leg backwards. And so you may need to do some core stability work. Realistically, if you have a patient with low back pain, let's say, or hip pain, you should probably be checking all of those things anyway. But if you hadn't done so already, or maybe there's some changes, you should look at that, tease that out, figure out what you need to do to be able to do a correct sideline hip abduction. So once again, bottom knee is bent, the top leg is straight. We're gonna brace the core here and we're gonna go up about 75% directly up, 25% back. That will look like this. And then come back. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding that despite the clamshell, standard clamshell level one, not being the best gluteus medius exercise, that you can take that exercise and progress it in terms of difficulty to a level three clamshell, and that can be a bridge to getting to the sideline hip abduction and performing that exercise correctly. And I can promise you, if you do the level three clamshell on yourself, you will be feeling doms in your gluteus medius the next day. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you so much.